excited about Christmas. I am so excited. We are gonna make our second card in our Christmas card series. Today we're painting a gray tabby cat. Here are the designs that we're going for and we're gonna be painting design number two, this cute little mischievous looking gray cat. If you are planning to paint along with me, these traceable line drawings are actually available for free. You can check out the link in the description below. So you can download those, print them, and paint right along with me. You will need some transfer paper. That's what I like to use to get my drawing onto my Christmas card. Other supplies you'll need today are six colors. Here we have yellow ochre, burnt sienna, ultramarine blue, indigo, turquoise blue, and cadmium red light. With the exception of cadmium red, these are all my mainstay colors for painting pet portraits. If you want to learn more about how to choose any color to match your reference photo for your pet portraits, download my free guide. It's a 24 page ebook. It's full of information all about that. You're going to love it. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. So let's get started. Make sure you have a water jar, a paper towel, a watercolor brush. I'll be using my silver black velvet size eight round brush. This is my favorite brush of all time. And I have a pencil. I have a waterproof marker to do some outlining at the end. If you look at my examples again, you can see I did some outlines to help them look more like illustrations, which I think looks really cute. And for the whiskers at the end, I'll be using my Dr. PH Martin's bleed proof white. You may need a tiny brush for those liner details. So just grab something small. The cards I'm using today are the Arteza 100% cotton cold press five by seven in watercolor cards. They come with matching envelopes, so if you get this set, you're gonna be all ready for the Christmas season. Comes with 25 blank cards. I'm gonna make sure, first of all, that the card opens the right way, because last time I made one, I put it on the back of the card. Whoops. So don't make the same mistake. All right, place the shiny side down and take your line drawing, place it right over the top. Make sure that it's centered on your card, and then grab your pencil and trace your drawing on. There we go, and we have a perfect drawing every time. That is my favorite way to get a quick and accurate sketch. If you don't have the traceable line drawings and you prefer to sketch these for yourself, that is something I did ahead of time. I actually sketched all of these on just regular old printer paper so I could erase to my heart's content without worrying about wrecking my paper. And then I transferred them to my watercolor paper. So that's a great option if you want to do the sketch yourself. Okay, we're gonna paint our little kitty in layers and we're gonna work light to dark, which just makes sense when you're working with a medium that's hard to remove, hard to erase. So we'll start with a light bluish gray. I'm gonna take a hint of turquoise blue and indigo and combine those with some water on my palette. You should have a nice watery consistency on your brush. We're gonna use this to paint a shadow tone on the underside of the white part of the hat. You can remove a little bit and then soften the edge. Watercolor tends to naturally want to form hard edges. So you can compensate for this by softening your edges as you work. Just remove a little paint, dry on the paper towel, and then swipe along the edge you just put down. And this is a great way to ensure that you get a nice blended look from light to dark. So I'm just painting all of this light gray, bluish gray on the underside of the hat. And then on the underside of the little ball in the Santa hat as well. Removing that and then softening it out. I want to leave the top side of the hat completely white. Make sure there are areas in your painting where you preserve the white of the paper. This will create the most variety in your values and just give you a result you'll be happier with rather than covering up every square inch with color. You can even intensify the shadow a little bit more with a second layer, going even darker. I'm not strictly following a reference photo with any of these designs. Yes, I did use reference photos, but I changed them quite a bit. I'll also make sure you guys have access to download those photos or a, a link to download them from the free photo website. So you can check those out for yourself. But you can see I changed some of the shapes, some of the angles. And that's what you can do as the artist. You get to play around with shapes and make the art your own. You don't have to be a slavish copyist of any photograph. You can change it as much as you want. All right, so then let's go ahead and do red next. We're gonna grab our cadmium red light. Juicy amount of paint. And cover the hat with a first layer of red. When you're creating a collection, for example, these four cards that I'm planning to paint are all gonna be part of a themed collection. It's a good idea to stick with the same color palette for all four cards. Don't mix up your palette too much because 
you want the four cards to look harmonious and to match each other. So for example, don't switch reds halfway through to a different red. Use the same one for all four. This M gram color is absolutely beautiful. It's one that I like to use for cardinals, anything that requires a brilliant, bright Christmas red. Now I'm gonna take a hint of my indigo and mix that in to produce a shadow tone. And from there, I can add the crease in the hat and just darken up the shadow tones where the hat is curling, where we see some wrinkles in the fabric to help it feel more tactile, softer like fabric, not just a stiff shape. I'm gonna grab even more red, making sure there's no extra water in my brush. And I'm gonna add a second layer right near the shadows to intensify the red one more time. And then we'll leave that alone. Rinse out your red completely and let's do a first layer on the cat. Once again, we'll start with a light wash of turquoise blue and indigo. Swirling it on the palette, making sure it's really watery. And we'll brush that in everywhere we see the gray tones in the cat. So all over the forehead. You can just avoid any highlights that you see for now or areas that might be more brown in color. But working in layers with light values ensures that we can creep our way slowly up to the correct values. Don't worry about whiskers either, just totally cover that up. We'll do our whiskers at the end with our opaque white paint. And this should help give you freedom to just move your brush quickly using broad brush strokes. And it's okay if you paint fast with a big brush because it will help you work in a more painterly fashion and give you a looser style. And challenging yourself sometimes with how much time you spend on a painting can help you develop a looser style too, if that's something that you're after. So right now it just looks like a ghost-like gray. Let's take a little hint of yellow ochre next. We'll drop that in. Don't have any extra water in your brush, but drop that in the underside of each eye. And along the top too, if you see some yellow there. The reference photo I'm looking at is a little complex. There's a lot of shadow going on that I don't necessarily want to include. And some si this side of the face is really dark in the shadow. I want to sort of even that out. So I'm gonna take some artistic license and make it more the shapes and colors that I want them to be. <laughs> but I'm gonna include some burnt sienna. So let's mix up a little hint of burnt sienna next. And add that around. We can start with that as a first layer for the nose. Not full force though, not completely pigmented and dark yet. Sort of a medium tinted wash. We can use that right over the whisker pads. You see a reddish brown tint on that area of the cat's face. And then I'm gonna pull that color over to the side of the head, beneath these facial stripes. And we need to balance that out, so bring that color on the left side as well. You might be like, what? This cat is gray, why are we putting brown in there? We will help neutralize that brown when we start to add some ultramarine in just a minute. So don't freak out. This is all part of the process. So yeah, let's actually just go ahead and use that layer of burnt sienna covering up the whole face, except for the white fur under the chin, under the mouth. Just avoid that area for now. We can bring some of that combo that we used for the hat into the dark area of the ear. And it actually is a perfect color. It's this pinkish brown. It's really perfect for the inner ear. You can even negative paint around some little strands of hair. With cats, you see lots of white hair overlapping dark hair in many cases. And it can be a little overwhelming and complicated, but for a Christmas card, we wanna to try to simplify it as much as possible. Now I'm gonna take my ultramarine blue. This is a warmer blue, it leans more red than green. And we're going to paint that as another layer over the top of the cat's face. 
I'm going to start with the center of the head, not worrying about stripes just yet. And you can see now it looks much more blue, less brown. And so we're going to have to balance that out with some more burnt sienna in a second. But we're just glazing one color over the next, building up the layers with color and value, adding depth and dimension, color variety. We're trying to make it fun and exciting to look at. Cats can be really tricky to paint. There's a lot of fur texture. In, this, in the case of tabby cats, there's stripes involved, whiskers, and of course those unique cat eyes. We want to try to capture all of that, but try to simplify it so that we're not tearing our hair out with details. Okay, now I'm going to mix up much more of a true gray using the ultramarine and burnt sienna. And you can see the combination at about 50-50 produces a beautiful neutral gray. Let's leave this wet area alone for just a second, but we'll use this neutral gray to paint under the mouth, a little shadow tone here. And dry on your paper towel if you're introducing too much water in. Too much water is the enemy of watercolor. Okay, so we'll use this for another use in a minute. Let's add a first layer to the eyes. For the eyes, I'm gonna use turquoise blue mixed with some yellow ochre. And I need to water that down quite a bit, add a little more yellow. We're going for almost a spring green. I think that's good. And we'll paint a first layer inside of the eyes. Let's just avoid one tiny little highlight. But you can paint over everything else. This eye on the left is slightly lighter because it's more in the light. So I'm just going to remove a little bit of the paint from my brush. Going in with a slightly lighter value. <laughs> Looks a little strange right now. Don't worry. Once we start adding our dark values, it'll look better. If your forehead of your cat is dry enough, you can go in with your neutral gray and darken in between the, the two eyes right here and start to hint at or suggest those distinctive tabby stripes above the eyes. In fact, you can go in with a perfectly dark color at this point if you want to. I'm going to mix burnt sienna with indigo, a little more indigo to create an almost black and using tiny vertical brush strokes, we'll paint the stripes. This is definitely a little more complex than it was to paint the dog. Cats just have a lot, a lot of details. But of course, you could simplify these stripes and just do you know, a quick up and down brush stroke. You don't have to add all the fur details. That's totally fine if you want to leave that out. I'm going to remove a little paint so I have a lighter value on my brush and add some fur texture, just using a blotting motion with the tip of my brush, while also adding a dark gray to the top of the head. Remove even more, and I'm going to swipe between those stripes to help darken up the forehead, giving it a more final color and value with this dark gray. Let's mix up some more of our neutral gray and keep darkening up our kitty cat's face. Additional layers just help bring it to the correct value that it needs to be at without risking going too dark too soon. You can introduce a little bit more burnt sienna, where you see more of a pinkish brown on the outer edges of the face here. And again, don't worry about whiskers. We'll get to those. Let it blend with the gray that you just put down, but don't introduce any excess or new water to your composition. 
And it looks strange right now because we haven't added the stripes or the eye details yet. With that little wash of burnt sienna, let's outline the eyes. And so we definitely see a differentiation between the brown around the eyes and the gray that's just next to that. And that's what we want. We want that slight color shift there. Okay, we're going to need to let that dry before we add our final dark details. While that's drying, we can paint the red strings on the hat. So we'll take more of our cadmium red and paint these little ties coming down. This was inspired by the reference photo, but definitely the shapes that I created here were completely invented. Coming across and tying in the front, that's not what I saw in the photo. Totally just added that. <laughs> but you get to do that as the artist. Then, just like we did with the ball on the hat, we're going to add a shadow tone on the underside of each of these little puff balls right here. just to help them feel rounded and like they have some shape to them. You can soften that out with a mostly dry brush. There. Now for the final details on the cat, if you wish to just use your waterproof marker for that, you totally could. Or you could go in with some paint and paint the stripes. It's completely up to you. The eyes are dry enough that I'm going to go ahead and take my marker and color in the pupil of each eye. Just make sure the paint around us is dry. And then you've got the distinctive dark corners of the eyes. In the reference photo, this one is slightly closed because of the way it's scrunched on the basket. And I decided to change that and open it up a little bit more to match the left eye. Since we're not painting the basket that the cat is sitting in, it wouldn't make sense for the eye to be scrunched like that. Already that's looking so much better. And you can reinforce the stripes. Markers work really well for this. And even outline the underside of the hat. They don't have to be a perfect solid line. You can make it somewhat bumpy, almost like a pillow shape across the top, like that. And then outline the top of the hat as well in the same way. As you flatten your brush pen, you should get broader marks. And when you use more of the tip of the brush, you'll get light feathery marks, skinnier lines. So just enjoy, get lost in the process, have fun with these. Might need to adjust your grip on your pen so you can get a better angle when you're doing your outlining. Like that. Yeah, that's so fun. Let's keep going with the stripes. So just like I was doing with my paintbrush, I'm using short parallel brush strokes to suggest fur texture as I draw these details onto the cat. And then we'll outline the left eye. We're going to have to go back in and add another layer to darken the inside of the eyes. That light green just isn't cutting it. It's looking too light now that we're adding these darker values. So we're going to have to boost the color inside of the eyes with some darker tones. So easy when you're using a brush pen does all the hard work for you just about and it's looking so much better. We can also darken the outside of the nose and basically just draw that in in more detail. So important though that whatever pen you decide to use for this is waterproof, especially if you decide to add more layers to your final painting. All right, and then under the eye, there's a stripe. We also see more dark stripes along the side of the face. You can make them furry and textured like this. The brush pen works great for that. And then just mimic that on the other side. 
although they don't have to be exact copies of each other, the, stri the stripes can look a little different from side to side. And then of course we need to add whisker pads. Those are those distinctive dark dots along the muzzle or along the snout. This is where the whiskers are growing from. And if you wish to outline the mouth and make it look like more of a smile, your brush pen can certainly help create that as well. And then I'm just gonna outline along the side of the head and add some fur texture curving down like this and then connecting it around the bottom and then outlining these shapes. You can make the string look more like a rope. All right, so now that we've got it all outlined, I just see a couple more things I wanna to add to make it really stand out, just some darker colors here and there. So back to my brush, I'm gonna take some more gray with some brown mixed in and just add another layer in certain areas on the fur, like right here above the eye. Just want to darken the forehead one more time. And the area between the eyes. And then I mentioned darkening the eyes as well. So for that, let's take some ultramarine and just darken inside of the eyes, but try to leave some of that green still exposed. So you can especially darken around the pupils. That's where it would be most noticeable. That helps a lot, I think. And then take some more gray, add some more brush strokes underneath the eye. We're painting I can't help it, sort of realistic style, but with an illustrative touch. It's just my favorite. And then let's add a little bit of a shadow tone. Let's use the turquoise blue actually. Water down for right here under the head. Yeah, that's cute. One more shadow tone on the hat. Towards the end here, you can let your brush strokes get a little bit messier, use broader washes. All of your layers underneath have done the hard work for you, so this is just topping it off. All right, we need to let that dry completely before we add the white whiskers. But these will be our last details. So I have my Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White and a tiny little Arteza liner brush. I think they sell these in packs of 10 or 15 on Amazon. So you can get them when you're picking up your Christmas cards. And if it's dry enough, we can start to add whiskers. Try to complete each whisker in a complete swooping motion using a teeny tiny brush. It's okay if they overlap your outline. The nice thing about the Bleed Proof White is that it's so white, it's so opaque, really so perfect for these thick white whiskers on a cat. Yeah, that adds so much. There's something about the whiskers at the end that just really brings it to life. We'll add a couple little whiskers above the head. I kinda messed that one up, so I'm gonna wipe it out. I'll start that over in a second. And you can also make the highlights more brilliant if you lost those while you were working. There we go. <laughs> There's our doer little gray tabby cat. If you enjoyed painting this little tabby cat with me, stay tuned. There are two more Christmas cards coming in the next couple of videos, so do watch for those. In the meantime, I do have another set of Christmas cards I created last year. You can check those out right over here. Thanks for watching today. I'll see you soon.